Welcome everybody to another brand new episode of It's My Wrestling Podcast. I'm of course, as always, your host, Chris Dees, and today's episode is a Survivor Series Super Show. We're recording this in October, so by the time it goes out, Survivor Series will be just around the corner. So in honour of WWE's final Big Four pay-per-view of the year, we've gathered here to talk about everything that's great about the pay-per-view and everything that's not so great about the pay-per-view. Before we get started, I'll introduce my guests, who I can't seem to get rid of. They keep coming back. I promise I'm not paying them to be here. Um, I've got Mr. George Booker, I have Jimmy Bebe, and Mr. Mike Nunn. They've joined me for like three or four shows now, and it's always a good time. Um, before before I get those guys involved, though, let me talk a little bit about Survivor Series. Um, dates all the way back to 1987. First event only consisted of four elimination matches. Really small card, but still quite a long card. Um, there was a women's 5v5. There were two 5v5 men's matches, and a huge 10 versus 10, which apparently is where... AW get their weekly booking ideas from. Um, this formula remained until about 1991, where we had the first ever singles match in Survivor Series pay-per-view history. Just two local lads nobody had really heard of at the time, called Hulk Hogan and The Undertaker. Not sure whatever became of those guys. Uh, the pay-per-views were made a staple of WWE ever since, giving us some huge moments, huge matches, huge debuts. You know, we've had stuff like the debut with The Undertaker and the Gobbledygooker at the same event legendary um we had the the start of the rock's legendary iconic heel turn that really like catapulted him into the stratosphere and turned him into the star that he is these days the first ever elimination chamber match obviously a huge huge moment uh and of course the montreal screw job you know survivor series isn't just about the you think of survivor series you think of 5v5 traditional elimination matches but there's been there's been a lot of big 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 moments um so guys yeah thank you for thank you for joining me i don't know about you lot but growing up survivor series was always my favorite pay-per-view it's sort of taken a bit of a back seat now doesn't feel as important as it once did uh george mate what are your what are your memories of the pay-per-view what does it mean to you what did it mean to you like growing up uh, growing up it was the elimination stipulation where you'd have four against four, five against five, and you'd also have like cool team names as well. And just the fact that you could get beaten by an elbow drop, something like that. But the, obviously <laughs> the matches were never boring. And, yeah. you know, I just remember watching as a kid, I was so invested into it, you know, just people that you wouldn't normally see the same up. Um, mm-hmm. And I remember like one of the best ones was like 1990, uh, Undertaker's debut. And obviously you had Ultimate Warrior, Kerry Von Eric and Legion of Doom, and they all just look fucking like <laughs> superheroes, man. So that's one thing that sticks out to me. Um, Mike, how about you, buddy? Well, yeah, echoing what George said, just the elimination stipulation just felt mm. it was so different, especially growing up. They didn't do a lot of that anywhere else other than Survivor Series. So the traditional five and five, sometimes the four and four as well. Um, yeah, absolutely loved it. Yeah, see two big stars if they are in a heated feud going against each other picking a team to do so it was always one of my favorite pay-per-views of course growing up and it still is now even even though it feels a bit less special yeah yeah absolutely jimmy any any big moments any any big matches that you remember growing up watching it uh well i feel like i'm the lone one here because survivor series of the big four is my least favorite um okay. i like elimination matches they're exciting but i don't like how you'll have one team that's you'll have like the heart foundation and then they're taking on just four random guys who came together to take them on that's always been like put me off um yeah. 97 is obviously the one that sticks with me the most because of the screw job yeah. um it was just it's crazy to just go back and watch it and still can't believe that that's that's where they went with that yeah, and I still think to this day, you know, like no matter how many people talk about it, and you know, Vince could come out and talk about it, we'd st- you, you're still never a hundred percent sure, are you? I still don't really know what happened. I don't think anybody. There's obviously a select few people that know, but I think it's the kind of thing that will go to the Three grave. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Don't worry, what culture talk yeah. about it every day? So I'm sure they've got their own theories. <laughs> uh, Mike, what? Um, obviously, we've all we've all just touched on it a little bit. Obviously, Survivor Series has sort of like lost not its appeal but it doesn't feel as important as it used to do like what what do you make of like the lack of 
there's no consequences is there anymore is there like you know you had I, I can't remember what year it was but within like the last 10 years where i think it was raw versus smackdown and whichever team lost the other team would be in charge of that show yeah for the night you don't even get anything like that anymore no that, that's the problem with it because i don't the actual concept of brand versus brand it's quite exciting because you see people go up against each other that you won't see throughout the year the placement of the draft is a bit of an issue, though, to be honest, because yeah. recording yeah. this, the draft starts tonight. Um, and then we'd, we could see, for example, Drew McIntyre head to SmackDown, if that happens. And then he'll for sure be on Team SmackDown going up against Raw when he felt like the main guy in Raw for a, a long time. So mm. the placement of the draft, and it's been here for a few years, is an issue. But the main thing is the consequences. Um you need a reason. Why Why do they really care if Raw meets SmackDown? They, they don't. Yeah. Like we saw rats. one year, I think, um, I think it was um, when Raw clean sweeped SmackDown in the men's, I can't remember, I think it may have been last year or two years ago, when they were placed in a number one contendership match for the world title. That's the sort of thing that they should earn if they win their match. A shot of the world title you know, all the survivors yeah. get put in a, you know, number one contendership match or, you know, as you said, be in charge of the show, something that makes them want to want to win. Otherwise, what's, you know, what's the point? What's the point? Yeah. Yeah, and we sort of got that back a little bit. Obviously, it was still more bragging rights than anything, but 2019 when NXT got involved... That that formula worked really well because it was like obviously you know Raw and SmackDown have always been there's always been a discussion especially the last few years which one's the A show because SmackDown is generally better but NXT really felt like it had something to prove and yeah. obviously by the end of the night sure obviously it's it's predetermined so it really doesn't matter but but still on paper NXT won the night I think they won like I'd, they won by a few they won by it's, like uh, two or I think three it was five points. three to two. Yeah, yeah, which is it seemed like a pretty big deal at the time. Obviously, yeah. it didn't really lead on to much. But Jimmy, what like did you enjoy twenty nineteen? Do you think they should have carried on doing that since? Because obviously, not, we didn't get it yeah. in twenty twenty, did we? Not to jump ahead, but it is my favorite Survivor Series for the fact that with NXT coming in, I feel like it revitalized the event. It, it made it fresh. It gave us fresh faces. Uh, seeing just people like Walter and Drew McIntyre in the ring together that was very cool. Um, and it could have been the start of something really huge for NXT. Unfortunately, they after Survivor Series was over, Vince kind of just said, okay, back to Wednesday night to go. Mm. I have nothing left for you. Yeah, and it didn't really it didn't really have the desired effect, did it? It felt like it was no. to, to obviously get eyes on NXT, get people to start tuning into but, NXT. Yeah. But and then they dropped the ball and they didn't try anything to keep that momentum going for them. It was, it yeah. was just like, yeah, yeah we, we got our, we got what we wanted for the time being. And now let's just go back to what we were doing before. And it's a shame. It's yeah. a real shame. Yeah. We had a great show. Let's move on. That show is over. Yeah. yeah. Uh, George, George, what's, uh, what's the best Survivor Series song of all time? Deadly game. 98. Mm -mm. <laughs> Oh, you think I'm gonna say Limbiscuit, aren't you? Two thousand three. No, you told me it was um, Control, oh, Puddle of Mud. Oh, two thousand one. That is fucking brilliant. <laughs> Survivor Series ain't days. really known for its good music, is it? Like, I think that's that's part of like maybe I don't know if it's intentional, but it doesn't make it feel as as big as important. WrestleMania's always got something that you recognise. Think SummerSlam yeah. most years, like last year, I think SummerSlam was Little Mix. I'm not a big fan of Little Mix, but I yeah, know, yeah, yeah. Them, you know, they're a big <laughs> band. <laughs> you know, um, what's the other of the big four? It's just uh, the Rumble. The Rumble has has always had fairly big songs, but Survivor yeah. Series doesn't really have a like a memorable theme. I could pick out at least twenty different WrestleMania songs right now. Saliva, always. That's pretty good for 2002. Oh man. Yeah. And then Shawn Michaels with his shit stained trousers. <laughs> right. Was he wearing? Right, let's. Um, we spoke about this beforehand. We got this prepared a little bit. We're going to pick our ultimate Survivor Series teams. Everybody's taken a brand. Everybody's taken um, a, a different element of WWE. And then once this episode goes out, I'm going to put them on Twitter and we're going to see who's victorious. I'm pretty sure I'm going to be victorious, to be honest. Um, so, Jimmy is going to go first with Raw. What's your Raw ultimate Survivor Series team? So, 
with the current Raw team, I'm going with Matt Riddle because you got to have comedic relief on your team, I feel like. And I want to hear some more, more nicknames. I want to hear what he's going to give this team for their nicknames to get them <laughs> really motivated. I want Omos because he's just the yeah. size of him. There's Obviously. nobody that's going to stand toe-to-toe with him. It's not happening. And he's going to dominate anybody he's in the ring with. Yep. Uh, I want Woods and Kofi for the cohesion. And I think them and Riddle just work well together. And I want Karrion Cross as the final member because – I feel like if you're going to create a new star, Survivor Series is a good place to do it. You can make a real, you could basically start a, a good push by having Karen Cross be the person that eliminates the most or uh, is the last man standing. So yeah. that that's my team to go with. Is this Cross with a mask or without a mask? Oh, he's definitely uh, without a mask. And Scarlet is in the corner. That's the cross okay. you want to say. Every oh, time okay. I talk about carrying cross, that's the cross you can assume I'm talking about. No mask, Scarlet in the corner. What's happening there? When do you think we're going to get Scarlet? Are we Are we going to get Scarlet? Why haven't we got Scarlet? I think from what I've heard is that she's not cleared, which is weird because she's not do, like she's not getting physical, so it doesn't make sense. Yeah. No. But uh, I see it happening before the year's over. I, I think. I, I think it's finished now. I just know. We just know what it's like. Vince well, loves yeah. people up for no reason. Look at the iconics. But, but, but he likes blondes, and Scarlet is a blonde, so. Yeah, yeah but his latest shirt had Scarlet on with him. They released that a couple of weeks ago. Scarlet was on there. And he likes blondes, but he's just made, well, I assume he's made Mandy go brunette. But well, that's probably yeah. a good decision because he's she more involved in the brunette. Now. Not going to lie. She does. She looks better now. She looks yeah. better now. Yeah, she definitely looks better now. But yeah, I. I I think it before the end of the year we're getting carrying cross. I don't see them putting her like like uh George was saying, I don't see them putting her on the shirt for his merchandise if that's not the end game for their plan. Yeah, but they really like, they sense. released so many people, but they were still released merchandise and stuff. Wait, they released literally like most like there's still Bray White merchandise coming out. Yeah, yeah but this is a new merchandise well. that they're putting out like after he's deba- debuted on Raw. Like I don't see why they would yeah be promoting her as his mm. as his manager. <laughs> After he's I know what you mean. Without... I mean, but I know what they're yeah. like at the same time. They just they don't do yeah. it. they just do it on the spot. But we, well, I think I want them to be paired together. But yeah. who knows? I'm not getting my hopes up. That's, he has yeah. been booked a little bit better over the last few weeks. Though I will say that. Yeah, I know. I've seen you boys been praising it. Like the AEW fans are not loving you guys at the moment. <laughs> it's been very quiet on Monday nights. I love it. Because <laughs> <laughs> Raw's been killing it. Yeah. 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 He, he has he has been booked better the last few weeks, but. It's a like, pretty yeah. fucking low. It's a low bar, isn't it? Yeah. Like, <laughs> it's less it's... shit now. <laughs> but yeah, 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 not yeah. quite as shit. Like polishing yeah. a third. <laughs> yeah. So That's yeah, it. cool. That's a very good team. Just, just um, say say those members again for me, Jimmy. Sorry. We got Matt Riddle, Omos, Kofi Kingston, Xavier Woods, and Karrion Cross. Nice. I like that cohesion. It just looks like a team when I picture it. Uh, okay, so Mike is going to have SmackDown. Yeah, so what was our position on the world champion? You, you said that was okay? or mm, No, because no. chances are he's going to be in a champion v. champion match. Yeah, so are we picking realistic teams who are there now? Yeah. So no Cena, no Reigns. No part-timers. No Lesnar. Lesnar's on a. I wouldn't include it. I'd count as part time. Yeah, I've, I've, yeah. I've just lost my. I just lost one of my members. So you're gonna lose one of yours. Right, I'm going to <laughs> probably lost like three Edge. members though. So. Edge is full time <laughs> enough. Edge count. Okay. I would count Edge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can have Edge. Edge. He's in a program at the minute, so you can have Edge. Yeah. Okay. So I will start with Edge because he's a legend, Hall of Famer, mm-hmm. the greatest of all time, in my opinion. Um, got to have Edge and. Secondly, going to go with the man he's in a hot feud with right now, the Drip God, Seth Rollins, because, well, you've got to have Seth Rollins. He's one of the most decorated stars in the company today. Mm -hmm. So they're the two big, obvious names, I feel. If we're leaving out Reigns and Lesnar and Cena, they're the two big names. My third choice is going to be Kevin Owens. Yeah. Kevin Owens is just brilliant. You know, can't speak highly enough of him. He can do it all. He can bring intensity. He's 
He can bring comedy. Um, he can go out there, be a good team, and you never know what you're going to get. You can stab someone in the back just as easy. I was going to say, yeah, you, you literally never know what you're going to get, do you? <laughs> um, so they're the, they're the three big picks. So my fourth choice, I'm going to go with... Now this has got interesting because I've, I had Reigns and Lesnar ready. <laughs> we really fucked your team up, didn't we? Sorry. <laughs> That's fine. No, oh, wait, it's, it's, I'll, I'll be in effect now. Don't worry. Yeah. We've got plenty of choice. So, um, Finn Balor. Um, he's recently joined the SmackDown roster. He's been booked hot out of the gate. A big feud with Reigns. Bringing the Demon onto the team if that's the way they go. It'd be difficult to stop as well for anyone on the other side. So Finn Balor. Is on the top <laughs> yeah, they're, they might fall off. I don't know what happened there. So <laughs> maybe we'll find out a bit more tonight. I'm sure we will. Um, so there. So my last pick. I'm going to try and go for something a bit more uh, obscure, maybe. Um, but it's difficult to swag because they're all so good. Right, okay. Um, for how good he's... Okay, for how good that he's been for the last 12 months or 18 months, my fifth spot is going to go to one half of the SmackDown Tag Team Champions, main event, Jey Uso, because I feel like he deserves it. Um, good job. Good job. Good job. Good job. Good job. And... Uh, yeah, I feel like he deserves it. So I'm going to stick Jay so on as my, my, fifth, my fifth choice. Nice. Sorry, Sammy Zane, you just missed out. No, that's a good shout. I was surprised you didn't just go for having the Usos together for that like cohesion, a bit like Jimmy had um, yeah. Kofi and Woods. But like Jay, Jay worked on his own for, for a while yeah. without Jimmy. So I feel, I feel like he, he, could, he could pull the load there. Obviously, he's gone back into a team now. But for a while, it was main event in SmackDown what, every week. Yeah. So... Yeah. He's doing a great job. Yeah, man. It's another good team. It's another good team. Um, you you said Kevin Owens in there. What do you think is going on with Kevin Owens? Where's he going to be in January? Well, I mean, the rumours are saying he could stay out his contract. So, I don't know. Obviously, a lot of that, I feel, is created by the AEW fan base. So, I, you know, haven't really seen anything concrete. I feel like he's been booked pretty well. Since day one in WWE, you know, you can't yeah. always be the top guy, but if he's always been portrayed as one of the top guys in the company whenever he's been been out there, you know, so I, I think he said in the past how much he enjoyed being there. You know, Sami Zayn is his best friend. He's still there. I don't know. I hope he stays because I honestly don't think AEW need anybody else at this point. So, yeah, I hope he stays. Yeah, especially the, the recent influx and potential of Bray as well. It's just going to be ridiculous, isn't yeah. it? Cool. Okay, that's another very good team. Uh, George, you have got NXT. Oh, boy, no. Fucked. So, <laughs> <laughs> if you follow me on social media, you know that I'm not the biggest fan of the program at the moment, <laughs> but it might improve. Fuck knows. But, so I'm going to go with the current team. Walter counts as the captain. The ring general, not current champion. Then I'll have my boy Pete Dunn. Yeah, mm-hmm. boy. Mm-hmm. No, I emphasize like that, but Pete Dunn, fucking love him. He's in there. Uh, the rookie himself, Bron Breaker, as the third member. He is winning everyone over at the moment, including the diehard AWA fans. AEW, not AWA, but you know what I mean. Kyle O'Reilly, going number four. You haven't had the best year, but you're still a boy, and I know what you're capable of. And number five, this one counts and will surprise you all. Comes out retirement. He's on commentary, Wade Barrett. Okay. okay. Yeah. 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 I'd be down for that. That'd be a nice yeah. little pop. That'd be cool. Yeah. I thought you were going to say William Regal at first. <laughs> oh, no, no. I mean, if we are doing, I was, I was but I was like, all right, don't realistic. And like, we all know he's next fucked. And I, yeah. all I would love for him to say after the end of the match, all games. <laughs> but yeah, now I've been my team. That's five. So Walter, Pete Dunn, Bron Baker, Kyle O'Reilly, and I've got some bad news. Wait, Barrett. 
bit in the Brit side, but you know, I'm in the UK, so what do you expect? And I'd hope for hope for a better showing for Walter this time than when we saw him yeah. in 2019. <laughs> Jesus Christ. That was oh, the only... fucking, oh, I forgot about that. Oh, you have to remind me. Yeah, the only only bad moment from that, that whole pay per view for me was Walter's treatment, like quick. Was it Drew? Drew eliminated yeah. him? Yeah, Drew. Came all really quickly. And so that's probably the only bad thing about that show itself. I mean, the main event was the best, but if the only thing I had to really bitch about was that how they treated him. But yeah. what a fucking show, by the way. At least, it ended, at least it ended with Keith Lee having a big show in and the whole respect oh, for Roman that was Reigns. Awesome. Oh, oh, Joe, I don't mind the Bearcat thing, by the way. I know a lot of people have been shitting on it, but you know, if it means it's going to be serious and beating people up, I don't care. I like his new presentation. I think it's the best he's looked since he's been called skirt, up. So. Yeah, it's an improvement. <laughs> yes. Yeah. What about George? What about Walter then? So, like, what what do you think is going to happen with Walter now? Uh, well, there's a strong rumor, and I've heard myself that he is going to America permanently. Whether he goes to 2.0 is a different story. I think he's too good, way too good. Obviously, it defeats the purpose of it. There are some people like Tomasa Champa and Pete Dunn, but they want to be there at the moment. So, yeah. with Walter, I would literally put him on SmackDown. Treat him like fucking royalty and literally protect him for the next two years. Yeah. I'd have him go up with, with Imperium as well. The three of them. See, I don't love Imperium. That's a weird thing as well. I love Walter, but I don't love Imperium because I think the other two members, think, I mean, they did a job, but I just don't really. Whenever they wrestle, I'm just a bit. I'm yeah, without, without Walter, they're, you know, yeah. running the wheel. But yeah. with him, they could be, they're, they could back him up. Um, Martell is pretty decent on the mic as well. Um, when Walter isn't really, so he, why, why can't we not have Walter destroy Goldberg? Like, why do we still have to protect Goldberg in 2021? You know, it's, <laughs> that's it's ludicrous. Why I, Goldberg's gonna beat Ashley soon, so that's why I like the idea of calling him up, but I wouldn't put him on SmackDown because if you wanted to protect him for two years, it's not gonna happen with Roman Reigns there. No, nah, yeah, no, nah, okay. eventually be fed to him. I'd put him on Raw and just, like you said, protect him for two years and just build him up. Doesn't need to be on yeah, every week. Has a couple yeah. of squash matches, big matches where someone gets a bit of momentum, you know. I know he's doing a bit of fancy booking, but yeah, he fucking, he's large in life, man. Like, I don't know if you boys are same life, but he stands out. Um, you see something special. Oh, yeah. He's yeah. special. He's got an aura about him that people just see him like, whoa. Mm. And yeah, that was, big... I, actually, the, the aura is nearly ruined. I met him, I was like, oh, he's actually really nice. And we can we can talk about him all day and we can praise him all day and I I praise him all day because he is fucking brilliant at what he does. Love him. But the problem with Walter is he's not he's not sellable. He's not marketable. Like you you look at him until you see him going in the ring, he just looks like and I hope he's not listening, he looks like (laughs) he looks like a thumb. This You know, he just looks like it. He looks like a potato. He, he just, <laughs> That's he what I think. Like a, uh, oh man, you're gonna piss some people off with that. You are. Being <laughs> backed up by Imperium could help that. I'm not saying Walter. jack shit. I see what you mean before the, the thumb comment. Like, yeah, he's not charismatic, is he? Like, he's not gonna yeah, cut. There's nothing. Like, five minute promo. Nothing about him's gonna sell an action figure. You know, he's not gonna be on the front of magazines or anything like that. He's not yeah. gonna be on the front of 2K24 or whatever it ends up being by then. You know, he's not gonna. He's just not. He he doesn't look. You know, that's the thing. He looks like a wrestler of a certain era. He doesn't yeah. look like a Roman Reigns. He doesn't look like a Drew. He's not chiselled. Yeah. He's not going to be on chat shows. So I don't know. I that's I why I dread with... when Vince properly takes a look at him. Yeah, because oh, well, Vince probably knows who he is. But I'm just mean when Vince yeah. gets a real, you know, stands next to him and actually hangs out with him a bit more and realizes like, who's this fat Austrian, you know? Like, can't to, dis- to dispute that marketable fact, I will say. When he came, when he got tagged in at that Survivor Series, that place went nuts. Mm. Yeah, they they yeah. they connect with him, and I think if he's a heel, you don't have to be that marketable. I think he's gonna, I need think, to be. Yeah, yeah. It, it, as long as he's built up the proper way, and yeah. he just he keeps that look, I think it would work. It's just it's just a matter of booking him the right way, because like, like, the fans were behind work. him. Yeah, yeah. I think his style helps as well. That the, how brutal his yeah. matches have been. You don't yeah. see that a lot. No, I think that you, you put him in the ring with Sheamus. Like a fight. Yeah, you put him in the ring yeah, with Sheamus. Yeah, Walter versus Sheamus. Oh, just think about Sheamus. Yeah, yeah, yes, please. The they would, they, yeah. They'd probably kill each other. <laughs> My uh, and David only still give it four and a half stars. 
Yeah. That's what I was going to say. Like, as much as, I, as much as I don't want to bring up Dave Meltzer, like we always seem to, it'd be interesting to see what he does, wouldn't it? It'd be interesting to see how he rates Walter on the main roster because I think all of his matches, or at least certainly like the last four or five against like... Five or higher. Tyler Bay, yeah. Pete Dunn, Ila Dragunov twice, you know, like you say, they've all been five or higher. Is he going to get that on the main roster? Nope. <laughs> Will he be allowed to have the same sort of match? Yeah, Jimmy, what would you say? What would you say? Because you're off to your Twitter and your ratings. If, if Walter gets anybody's five star, unless it's in the Madison Square Garden, then we're giving it six and a half, maybe even seven. Damn. Tokyo Dome, one star. <laughs> you have to follow him on Twitter to like appreciate it. <laughs> follow Jimmy Bebe for more context. Yeah. Right, um, I'm gonna round. Matches. I'm gonna round this off with my um, my Survivor Series team. It's a Hall of Fame Survivor Series team. Lucky. There's fucking hundreds, thousands I could have chosen from, and I didn't want to just choose loads of giants because it would have been too easy. So I have gone with Kurt Angle because you you just need that technical ability, that mat wrestling. He's, he's just one of the strongest dudes ever. So it doesn't matter who's on the other team. Kurt Angle could either take them down physically or just, like I said, Matt wrestle them down, tap them out, whatever. He could do everything. And, like, uh, Mike, you had somebody in there for comedic relief. No, Jimmy, you had um, yeah. you had Matt Riddle. Riddle for comedic relief. Yeah. Kurt Angle was one of the best at being intense yeah. one minute and then just switching and being comedy relief so yeah Kurt Angle's my first one gotta have a monster in there so I've got the big red machine Kane don't really need to explain why Kane is Kane he's an absolute beast destroy anybody that faces him in the ring um Eddie Guerrero because it would just would just make me so happy to see Eddie Guerrero in the ring again you know um Eddie Eddie would be the perfect and in in this team Eddie would be the perfect guy to play that role of like he ends up three against one yeah, and he's got like that baby face comeback a bit like Dolph Ziggler in 2014, which we'll talk about later because that's my favorite match. Um, yeah, so Eddie would fit that role really well. That like comeback, everybody's behind him, everybody wants him to win. Um, Stone Cold Steve Austin would be my captain of the team because pff, I don't need to explain, really, do I? Um, and then I've got another monster in Mark Henry for another bit of the the heavy lifting, and and it'd be to avenge what happened in 2014. When he was the first eliminated from one straight punch from the big show, which was a crime. That was fucking great. That it was great. It was such a cool moment. Mm. You were like, I can't oh. wait to talk about that match, by the way. Yes, we'll talk about that in the match. You were like, oh, yeah. shit, okay. So that's my team. Uh, Kurt Angle, Kane, Eddie Guerrero, Stone Cold Steve Austin, and the world's strongest man, Mark Henry. Like I say, we'll put them out on Twitter uh, when this episode goes out and see who wins. Um, right, so... A few times we've, we've we've mentioned like, ah, oh, this match was great. I've just mentioned 2014 a couple of times. So mm. I want to know about everybody's favourite Survivor Series matches and favourite Survivor Series moments as well. Um, I'll get right into it with mine. Mentioned it a couple of times. It's the 2014 match, the 5v5 elimination. You had Team Cena of John Cena, the big show, Ryback, Dolph Ziggler and Eric Rowan versus Team Authority, which was obviously Seth Rollins, Kane, Rusev, Luke Harper, and Mark Henry. I love the story leading to into this. I was a big fan of the authority. I think everything that they did, like everything they did with Brian, everything they did with Cena, it, it, it was it was it was great TV. It was the last time I yeah. really, really properly enjoyed main roster WWE TV. And it's what what seven years ago now. Um I love the story about how it was up to Cena to keep these guys in their jobs. Um, but only only the other four would lose their jobs and Cena wouldn't lose their jobs. Um, you know, the shock during the match, you had um, Luke Harper, God bless his soul, going up against Eric Rowan, his um, former Wyatt family team member. The big show, as we said, taking out Mark Henry straight away with that one straight punch, and everybody was like, oh, shit, this just got real. Um, show eventually turning on Cena, hitting Cena, because obviously you realised, you know, we're probably going to lose. Everybody on my team's laid out. It's three versus three. I need my job. I've lost my house. I'm going to turn and join Team Authority. That was a pretty cool moment. Um, probably like, I don't know, the 5,000th heel turn of the big show. Just that year alone. Um, uh, what else was there? Ziggler. Ziggler going it alone. Like I said, Eddie would be great at Ziggler going it alone against all odds. He went down to three versus one. And then obviously this match is all about the icon Sting making his debut 
Nobody saw it coming. I know there was a lot of rumours, and I know there was a lot of talk about Sting coming over, but I shit myself. I shit my pants when that happened, man. That was such a good moment, and it didn't even dawn on me when I heard, when it went black and I heard the crows. I was like, ooh, okay, what's going on here? It didn't like connect straight away that it was Sting, and then when you saw his face flash above on a Titan Tron, that pop, man, that's, that's one of the biggest pops that I've ever heard. It was incredible. Um... He comes out and he helps Dolph win. It, that's it. The rest, the rest is history. Um, this match was perfect for me. It exemplifies everything about Survivor Series pay per views. You know, like I said, I always love this pay per view and its elimination rules. People turning on each other, a babyface comeback, somebody being outnumbered. Fantastic from start to finish. Such, such a good match. Does anybody else agree? Surely you must agree. Yes. Not my favorite, but I do fucking love it. It's it was, a fantastic it's one of mine. Match it's in my top three. In my top five, probably, yeah, 100%. It's a, it's, it's a shame what they did with Sting afterwards, obviously. We got some Even pretty like, cool Sting moments. Afterwards, you know. for the, the whole build-up. They get their fucking jobs back, like, four or five weeks later. Yeah. I wonder then, what would happen with Sting if he didn't get injured in that match with Rollins. If anything else yeah. would have happened yeah. with his WWE career. Probably would have lost to Goldberg or something. <laughs> I I didn't mind him losing at WrestleMania to Triple H, to be honest, because I didn't mind it. the nostalgia of the whole NWO and DX stuff getting involved. It just it was special, man. I got like I think we knew that DX were probably going to get involved, but when the NWO music hit, man, it still gives me chills mm. now. Yeah, that's right, man. I think when it. when it first happened, I was I was fine with it and I loved the match. Then I rewatched it, and then as time has gone, I've soured on it. Like stick yeah. to the one. Oh really? I'm I'm yeah, because I'm looking at it as like why is the NWO if, if helping anybody Sting is the last person yeah. in NWO. Well, yeah. Yeah. Out. That's what Sorry, I mean. I'm like, it, come on now. <laughs> no, no. it was, it was just like what's the most WCW time. thing we can do? Uh yeah. NWO, that'll do. Go, go, go. Yeah. yeah. And they just it was had cool to at the moment. The but... stuff. It's like, oh, yeah. the war's been over 15 years. Get over it. We all have. <laughs> Even Sting has. <laughs> <laughs> what well, um do you think do you think Sting should have gone over or was it just he should have gone over one final middle finger up from WWE to say yeah we won the war massively look at how they treat everyone that came from WWE since like the NWO not so much Hogan but Hall and Nash Steiner yeah you know Bagwell I mean he, he was a prick but you know <laughs> you, you know what I mean though oh, yeah. but Sting comes in Goldberg was a bit dodgy, you know, when he yeah, should have won the titles, like Elimination Chamber, they fucked him over. By the time he did win it, he lost so much momentum, not many people cared. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Jimmy, what's your favourite match? Uh, all time? Favorite, yeah, your favourite Survivor Series oh, oh, match. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm going with the 2019 one, surprisingly. Um, I know you guys aren't very happy with how they treated Walter, but going back watching it, he did get his moments before they did him dirty. And it was kind of a out of the blue thing. It was cool to see that crowd give Walter that reaction. Yeah. Because having him be a part of the team, it was kind of like, okay, people are going to get a chance to see what he's about. And it, it made me realize, oh, a lot of people know how good this man already is. So that's cool. Um, the story with, when it came down to the end, you had one SmackDown, one Raw, one NXT, Keith Lee yeah. versus Rollins. To see Rollins and Reigns kind of look at him and be like, hey, we need to team up here to take this guy out. They did a really good job of making Keith Lee look just fantastic. Um, but much like what we were talking about earlier, they, they just dropped the ball with him as well because yeah. it's they didn't do anything to build upon it. Um, but just seeing certain people uh, mesh together, uh, you got Matt Riddle and – Chad Gable getting there, I think that would be a fantastic match to watch. And to see them tie up a little bit was cool. Walter Reigns, I think I think everybody would love to see that match. Um, Champa, I think that was Champa's last great I, I know he's champion now, but it's kind of like a thing, but mm. uh, I think that was his last great moment was in there. Um, mm. He led the NXT team and they won. Oh, well, they didn't win that match, but they won the night. I think that was cool. Champa and Randy Orton having their moment. That was fun. And you had war games before it as well, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah, because we were done in Adam Cole. Night before yeah, they had yeah, war yeah. games, so you had all these guys that were mm. fighting, and they were just, like, on their last leg. Yeah. Um, Such good week. I think the settles. event as a whole kind of, like, makes me pick this match because yeah. top to bottom, I love the card. I love the build. I think it's 
the best thing they've done probably in the past past ten years. I I just think it was great. Wow. I'm, I'm, it is I'm up mad. there. It's one of the best pay per views. I'm I'm mad that they just dropped the ball afterwards because NXT had all this momentum. Um, for the people who are into ratings, NXT popped a million. Um, and yes. it's like if you if they would have kept building on this, I think things for NXT might be different right now. Uh, yeah. but they just dropped the ball on that. They dropped the ball on Keith Lee, and yeah. But the match, I, I just love it. I just like, like I said, seeing Walter go out that fast was kind of surprising. But again, he did get his moments, so I'm not entirely mad that he was the first eliminated. But yeah, I'll tell you what that's... always what always springs to mind when I think about this this um, this Survivor Series. Not so much the immediate build for the pay per view, but the mess that happened in um, in Saudi Arabia with the whole you know the whole um, delayed flight and all that. Yeah. And they had to change things around, and we ended up getting just yeah. the best episode of SmackDown ever, which obviously mm-hmm. led to a lot of what we then saw. Like that episode yeah. of SmackDown when we ended up, who did we get? We got yeah, Adam Cole versus Daniel Bryan. Yeah, yeah. fantastic. Um, yeah, we had uh, Matt Keith Riddle Lee. and Keith Lee attacking Sami Zayn. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah the DX Army thing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and then that whole thing in the in, in the ring at the very end, where you know, just that that that's an image that will stay yeah. with me forever. Just the whole NXT mm. crew there, brilliant, brilliant episode. Like, yeah. you know, people people talked a lot of shit about what happened in Saudi and their whole relationship between WWE and the Saudi Ravens. I was like, in that one moment, I'm I'm really glad they did it because that is probably probably my favorite episode of SmackDown ever. They were a huge I... NXT fan. That was a really special one for yeah. me. Being a big NXT fan, I think that's another reason why I, this one just is close to me. I just everything about yeah. it. Yeah, absolutely, man. Right, uh, George, what's your favorite Survivor Series match? A uh, bit older than the matches that you guys have selected, but Survivor Series 2003. It had a match: it's Team Austin versus Team Bischoff. Fantastic mm-hmm. match in terms of storytelling how the eliminations were done and the build up itself was incredible. I really I really do believe that the Austin Bischoff story around 2003 does not get the praise and credit it deserves. It like Raw itself was a bit of a rough year with Triple H's dominance, but you had that that sort of yeah. covered it and sort of made it entertaining. But the match itself, Shawn Michaels performance, you know, when he's it's 3 on 1 and he's got defeat, I think it's Christian Jericho and Orton and just how he's literally fighting for his life, fighting for Austin's career and JR's commentary. And like Orton is just, you know, red hot in terms of being a young heel when he was the legend killer, which I, uh, I'm I'm smiling now because I was such a huge Orton fan. I still am, but back then, like, I was just like, oh, like the legend killers were so cool. Um, but the match itself, fantastic. And you really are, I was so invested in it, man. Like it is Oh, just like you had the Austin's team, Team Dudley's, uh, sorry, Dudley Boys, Booker C, RVD, and Shawn Michaels. And then you had on Eric Bischoff's team, Scott Steiner, of all people, who was on his way out, uh, Mark Henry, Jericho, Christian, and Orton. And then you had a young Batista as well come out and then obviously cost the match. But fantastic from start to finish. Love it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I remember it. I completely agree. Um... It's, it's funny, isn't it? Like, we, we all, as fans, complain so often about how bad the build is, but you never complain about how bad the build is for Survivor Series. It's always really well done. These mm. team versus team matches, you get properly invested. Like that, like my one with the whole team Cena versus team authority, because yeah. there were stakes on the line. Um, like, like with yours, George, it felt like it was important. It felt mm. like it mattered. Like, it didn't just feel like it was Raw versus SmackDown or whatever. Yeah, it, felt it like had literally been like a year's them. worth of TV. Building yeah. up to this one match, and it wasn't even. And the funny thing is, I men weren't even in the match. Like that's what you know, just yeah. amazing. Like, they can yeah. do that. Yeah, yeah, couldn't agree more, mate. Couldn't agree more, mate. Great yeah. choice. Fantastic yeah. match. Great yeah, choice. anyone's listened to this and seen it, go watch it, please. Yeah, absolutely. Mike, what's yours, buddy? Uh, I'm gonna go for 2016 Team Raw versus Team SmackDown. We had Kevin Owens and Chris Jericho, the best friends. Roman Reigns, Seth Rollins, and Big Braun Strowman on Team Raw versus AJ Styles, the WWE Champion, Dean Ambrose, who was in a feud with, Shane McMahon, the best in the world. (laughs) And then, of course, you had uh, 
best in the world, shape mine, of course. And you had the Wyatt family, Bray Wyatt and Randy Orton. Involved in that story. Like in that? The Wyatt family. Yeah. <laughs> Randy Orton in the Wyatt family in that year. So lots of great moments. Oh, of course, not forgetting the mascot, the Team SmackDown, James Ellsworth. Hey. Hey. Can't forget him. We're going to get cancelled for chairing that. The first moment <laughs> we come to involves James Ellsworth, who eliminated Braun Strowman from the match by holding his leg while he was fighting. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's quite funny. And when Braun was chasing him at the Rumble, thought he was going to murder him. So that was a great moment. Going into the pay per view, I remember the Raw Builders a lot. You had the best friends going up to Braun and trying to get him around on the left side. and Obviously, Reigns and Rollins were just sort of both baby faces at the time. For obviously during the match, you had the Shield reunion. Um, even though Ambrose was on the opposite side, by the time he was eliminated, he imploded with AJ, and they all, all three of them put AJ through the table with the Shield bomb. You had that vicious spear that Roman hit Shane with when Shane was doing the coast to coast when he knocked him that out. Was nasty. Um, brutal. And the ending, which really got me. So you had um, 2v2 at the end, Wyatt and Orton versus Rollins and Reigns. An appearance from Luke Harper at the end, um, which was was good to see. Um, They put Rollins out and it come down to Reigns. And Reigns was going for the spear and Bray. Um, Randy Orton pushed him out the way, pushed Bray out the way, saved him. Took the spear, Bray Wyatt, hit range with the sister Abigail. One, two, three. The Wyatt family stood tall, which is what you wanted to see. Because although it led to that terrible WrestleMania match, where they had bugs and cockroaches on the mat, and the, the build, you know, I loved seeing Orton in the actual Wyatt family. I thought that was great. But yeah, so during that time, I thought that storyline was great. Um, so for that reason, I went for that match. and. Even with a comedy, like we were talking about earlier, Jericho attacks someone with the list of Jericho uh, during the match. One of my favourite things Jericho has ever done. The list. Hands down, hands down. I remember Jericho and Shane got proper stiff uh, in that match yeah. when like, Shane was going a bit too far and going really. And Jericho actually has to fucking calm him down. Well, I know that everyone's not Jericho's bigger fan, but that was quite a cool moment where Jericho was like, "Look, yeah. I, I can actually fuck you up. You can stop this shadow boxing crap now." <laughs> Shane's got a habit of doing that sometimes. Yeah, man. Um, he's the boss's kid. But, you know. Yeah. And the best of all. Yeah, I just love the whole match. Just everything about it. The story was told. Different storylines in the match. You had the Ambrose and AJ rivalry. The Wyatt family, the best friends. Yeah. <clears throat> Ellsworth being an idiot. So, yeah, for that reason, and I still, I'm going to go for 2016. Brings me great joy, great joy talking about Jericho and Owens together, man. It was such good Brilliant. TV. Such Loved good them. TV. And it brings me immeasurable heartache when I remember the Festival of Friendship as well. One of the saddest moments ever. But one of the best Knew it was coming, in but it was so sad. Was, was it sadder than their match placement at WrestleMania, though? <laughs> <laughs> because of that, Jericho fucked off to New Japan. Well, no, just, just put them on first. They, they could have just went on first and it would have been Jericho fine. said that. Yeah, Jericho's like, yeah. hey, I would have much rather been first. Second. Like, Goldberg Lesnar did not need the fucking title. No. I, 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 don't, no. I, I don't blame Jericho at all. I don't not I do no. not blame for being pissed off. No, because it was the best, it was the best feud going into that WrestleMania. It was it, it hands down. It wasn't even absolutely close. Was. No. And then you literally feed Owens on the way there to fucking like to Goldberg in 10 seconds or something. Ugh. Yeah, Goldberg. <laughs> Those two wins that you got over Owens and The Fiend. Probably never recovered from that. He never recovered from that. That and the pandemic ruined that character, in my opinion. Yeah. Some of the shite we had to put up with in the pandemic, those um, cinematic matches, thank God they are, they're a thing of the past, by the way. That, Frustrat- um, yeah. Frustratingly, since then, they've put Goldberg okay because they've put Lashley over him, they've put Drew over him. That's fine. That's the way he should be. Losing. Drew, yes. Lashley, he was kind of protected still. Like he didn't yeah, lose clean, yeah. did they? With Drew, I was really surprised by that. But yeah, Lashley's a heel though, so I guess they would do that. But Drew just beat him straight up. Yeah. But to be fair, that was the first time Goldberg has never been able to finish a match. 
So it was, I I look at it as that. I thought that was kind of creative how they did it. It made Lashley kind of look like a bigger monster than yeah. As if he would have just beat him. I think yeah. that was pretty cool. That's fair. That's fair. But I am yeah. I don't want him on TV anymore. But. Was, um, <laughs> was was that Jericho Owens match? Was that the one where Owens went backstage after it? Yes. Vince wasn't happy with it. Yeah, Vince goes yep. no good. Yeah. I don't, I don't a piece remember of shit. why. I don't remember it being a bad match. It was alright. It was a solid I know, like. Yeah. I don't know. If we're, but if we're doing your favorite the, person's ratings, I'd say like a was, three star match. What was the first match of that night? I can't remember. Uh, AJ and Shane McMahon. That okay. was a good that match. was excellent. That match. I really so, so you you got a got two guys that are probably pissed off of their match placement going out there, not giving it probably their best because yeah, yeah. of how mm. things have turned out after that match. I could see it being like, oh, you guys could have been better, and yeah, th- yeah. that that's how I would probably take it. But by no means was it a bad match. No, it wasn't no, bad at all. No, no. Kevin Owens doesn't know how to have a bad match. No, it was a solid, not. decent match. Solid yeah. match. Three stars. Three stars, Dave. Easily. Um, right, cool, awesome. Well, thank you for sharing your favourite matches, guys. Um, another thing that is worth worth remembering as well that Survivor Series has given us is the Elimination Chamber. You know, people have, over the last few years especially, we get a lot of complaints about the Elimination Chamber, but if it wasn't for Survivor Series, we wouldn't have had it in the first place. That's where the very first one happened back in 2002. I think it's arguably probably still one of the best Chamber matches. They're all pretty much the same. Yeah. You know, as the years have gone, yeah. they all blend into one, really. But, but the first ever one with um, RVD, Jericho, Shawn Michaels, Triple H, Kane, and Booker T, you know, it, it, it spawned its own pay per view, which we'll get onto in a minute. I think it's a bit unnecessary in 2021. I don't think we need to have that pay per view so soon after um, after the oh, Rumble. I hate it. I hate it. Frankly. Um, but as I say, yeah, it's often forgotten that. that you know, it, it came from Survivor Series. Um, HBK went on, made history as the first ever winner. George, what what were your memories of of this match? This no, first well, it's actually one of my favorite uh, Elimination Chain match of all time. The first one. Uh, a few things, obviously, I've mentioned it earlier. Shawn Michaels is horrendous attire, but he's told a story that the it wasn't actually finished and blah blah blah, and this little haircut as well. But the actual match, Triple H being fucking injured because RVD landed right in his throat with uh, a frog star. If you call it that, Fox Bash, whatever it was. But RVD's performance as well, doing things I've never seen before, when he literally yeah. gets thrown and lands on the actual, um, on the cage, uh, on the wire, yeah. whatever it is. That was amazing. Um, Jericho's performance itself was really good. Just like literally really unique spots. And you just didn't know what was going to happen. You didn't know what to expect. And I didn't actually think Sean Michaels would win because he won at SummerSlam as well. Um, a few months prior, but the match itself is brilliant. Like, I love it. I was a big Sean. I'm a big Sean Michaels fan, so I cheered like mad when he won. I remember the promo video as well, like just of like all the construction of it. Yeah, they were saying it was all these, however many hundreds of tons of steel and, mm. and chains, sixteen stuff. miles of chains. Yeah, something yeah. Like that. I was like, <laughs> oh, I was properly excited for it. It was good. Yeah, um, I think yeah. it was back back in the in the old days of the chamber, wasn't it? Actual like unprotected steel floor. I believe so. Ring. Yes, and now it's it's more more of a padded floor now, isn't it? But back yeah, then yeah. it was it probably for the best. Felt properly oh, yeah. dangerous, and yeah, you know, yeah. pretty much every every single chamber now you get somebody going through one of the pods, and you're like, oh, hey, yeah. great, the pod. But the first time they went through the pod, and like Goldberg spearing people through the pods, oh. like it felt dangerous. That was cool. They were cool moments. Mm, when Kane chucks Jericho through it in the first one, I was like, that did not yeah. fun. Yeah, man. Yeah, man, they were really cool moments. Um, yeah, amazing match, Jimmy. What, what, what do you think about about the elimination chamber? Like I said, like the placing of it at the start of the year. Do you think it's needed? Uh, I think it's not needed. I think it's much like what they did with Hell in a Cell. It's just some. Um, it's they're overkilling it. Mm-hmm. There shouldn't be a pay per view dedicated to it. Um, having it between right in the middle of WrestleMania season is pretty silly. Because basically, with that pay per view, you're putting two pay per views between Royal Rumble and WrestleMania. I feel like it doesn't allow you to really focus on storylines building up to WrestleMania. Um, it, it, it's really just be saved for, I don't, because it's not one of those things like Hell in a Cell where it's a, a feud blow off thing. No. But maybe no. maybe for a, a situation where you got just a, a vacant title, put, put six guys in there, do it that way. So just save it for things like that. The, a yearly thing, it just, it kills the specialness of it. Because I couldn't tell you a favorite of mine, because yeah. like you were saying, they just kind of all blend. It's it's 
it's the same match. I enjoy watching them. I'm not going to lie. They're, they're fun, but it, there's no particular one I can look at. and like, yeah, that, that one right there was my hands down. I, mm, I think that's, I think that's very fair. I, I think I'm with Jimmy in this one. What would you, would you maybe do like how, um, how many in the bank started out? Just have a, like you said, like a one-off maybe at WrestleMania? A chamber match at WrestleMania? Something I don't like know that. if I'd do it at you WrestleMania. You could even do it at Hell in a Cell, maybe, and just bring it down around, I don't know. Mm. Yeah. I, I don't know about the WrestleMania thing, just because I like I like my WrestleManias that have stories where yeah. I, I don't like a lot of gimmicks toying with the, the show. Because that's the It'd show. It's very hard to follow to, it. it. Yeah, it's it's it supposed would. to be the yeah. best the best feuds, all that, a culmination of that. Um maybe afterwards like the next pay-per-view after wrestlemania to kind of like kickstart the whole like the restart that'd be a good place for it maybe in the year if you're gonna do it but again i just think every year is is just wild just to think that you have that kind of structure that's supposed to be that spectacular with a lot of violence you kind of get just uh numb to it after seeing it continuously and now they do two a year at at, that yeah no yeah, that's the thing for me. It's the fact that like years ago, you'd have one chamber match, and it'd be it'd be for the title. It could be for a vacant title, whatever. Yeah. The champion might be in there defending it, whatever the format might be. But but now because you got one for Raw and you got one for SmackDown, it sort of not cheapens the Rumble victory, but it yeah. sort of. I think it does it, actually. You, you know way. what I mean? It makes you think sort of like I don't know. Mm. Let's for example, I don't know somebody who is quite obviously just from raw let's say let's say it was drew drew wins the rumble you know chances are he's going to go for for whoever the champion is on raw with that rumble mm. victory so then why have the raw title on the line in in the chamber as well like yeah. it just it just doesn't make sense I, use use that extra time to build to wrestlemania I that. I, now that i'm thinking about it, i think a good place for it would actually be survivor series you could take three from each brand put them in there yeah and 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 give yeah, it a reason that. give it give it some meaning like the winner of the elimination chamber gets to pick his spot at royal rumble or something just mm, yeah. give it something to, to make go. it better yeah yes, the title show anything like that it's so Don't easy get, yeah to, to get the title to away from it come up just, with reasons just, isn't it it's yeah. so yeah. easy to book stuff how can we do it and they can't because vince mcmahon isn't <laughs> lurking over our shoulders <laughs> ridiculous it's ridiculous um cool right let's um let's talk current let's talk modern day so like as i said when this episode drops it's going to be literally just a few days away from survivor series 2021 we're we're talking at the start of october now so there's not really no no plans are in place yet they've not even really started building towards survivor series we can pretty much you know we can we can make some educated guesses as to what sort of matches we're going to get do we see roman versus Big E? Is NXT going to be involved in any way? You know, with the whole NXT 2.0, could we see Bron Breaker oh, no. or anybody like that come up? I don't think so. <laughs> no, just no. purely I, Raw versus SmackDown. I think they're going to distance themselves from the NXT completely. Yeah, being developmental now, I can't see any advantage to putting them on Survivor Series because be, you're either going to be bury fair them. against Becky Lynch. <laughs> you're going you're gonna to either bury those guys or you're going to make your main roster look inferior to exactly. a bunch of them. There is no win. Where, good. Yeah. There's no, no, like, no one comes out good at this. We are not yeah. B-Fab fans in here at all. No, I think she's got charisma. I think she's got a great look. Yeah, got but that match, by the time of this filming, when this comes out, well, a month later, but this week, a match took place of her and Electra Lopez, which was fucking awful. Abysmal. Like, no excuse to be that bad after like two years in the performance center. Not even your first match. Like, this is one thing about 2.0, by the way. Like, they're going to miss those house shows that you used to do in NXT big yeah. time. We're yeah. going to see a lot of crap. Yeah, man. Absolutely. So, all right. So, Jimmy, what uh, what matches do you want to see uh, this year's Survivor Series then, 2021? If you could book so... like the two, the two main title matches what would you what would you be booking well i i don't know if i'm the first one that said this but i didn't see anyone mentioning this match prior to me i want to see new day versus the hurt business versus the bloodline war games i don't think there's any reason to have war games in nxt at this point if it's developmental Uh, they're building people they should not be touching that so if you're going to bring war games to wwe give me that match 
I don't know how you do it because obviously there's only two titles, but give it to me. Like nobody's going to complain if we get that. Like I think that would just be amazing. I think you just um, have to forget about titles. They just have to separate that completely. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So we are the dominant of the use, We're the best. That. If, that's if they, could find, a, if they yeah. could find a way to keep the Bobby Lashley Big E thing fresh while also incorporating Roman Reigns' personal issues with both of them, it's easy to book. It, it really is. It's just a matter of yeah. finding a way to have two separate brands with three teams all intertwined at, uh, at some point. Um, and if I'm booking another match, I want to see, I don't know, um, give me... You can move around the titles. You can put them on whoever you want. Yeah, in yeah, yeah. Like a series. Um, yeah, I don't know. That's tough. Yeah. Because I feel like we just had the tag team match I want to see when we saw the Street Profits and the Usos. I don't think you can get a better tag team match than that. Um, no, I give me Damian Priest and Shinsuke. Just leave the titles on those guys. I I think it. You got two rock stars in the ring. Let let them just go out and yeah, do what they do. I think it'd be fun. It'd be a fun match. George, would you make any booking choices so that you could have any particular dream matches or anything? I'm gonna try to think. I'm gonna avoid matches that have taken place. So no Drew and Roman because I that match last year, by the way, was fantastic. Oh, um, like, not the best that. finish, but a really good match. Doesn't uh, yeah. really went unnoticed by a lot of people. Um, really hard on man. Like just think of matches. I mean, Morrison and Miz, but I mean, if you put them, you have to put them on different brands. I think that might be a good match, like a proper match and pay per view. I think they only wrestled like once in Bragg and Rights in two thousand and nine, which was all right, nothing special. Uh, I don't know. Brock Lashley. Yeah. Like, yeah. You know, um, Finally. no, no, other champions for SmackDown, but it's more to them. It's who is the most dangerous man in the wrestling business right now. I mean, they can mention the Octagon and want, but just give me that match. I'll be happy. Yeah, I'll be very happy. Two big meaty men slapping meat. Yeah. Uh, Mike, anything you do, buddy, for this year? Right. So, yes. Um, That's your they're going to go champion, champion, aren't they? So. <laughs> First, I would leave. I would leave the world champions as they are. Um, Roman versus Big E. We've just kind of seen that match being built a look for a little while on SmackDown with E having the briefcase in Paul Heyman's face, hysterically laughing at him every week for for a while. You know, he's been teasing the match with Roman for a while. I think they could really go out there and just kill it. Um, I think that'd be great. As for the second match I'd like to see, we're going to go to the women. So I'd keep the title. This is fantasy book here. I'm not saying it should happen in terms of title switch. Keep the title in Charlotte and switch and put Bella back in as the SmackDown Women's Champion. Bianca Bella versus Charlotte Flair. A big match. The two most athletic women in probably in the wrestling business, full stop. Mm. Um, two, yeah. Yeah, they've got the strength of everything. I think we haven't seen that match before. And I think mm. they are very similar, those two as well, in a lot of ways. And I think they would just put on an absolute banger. So, yeah, Bianca Belair, Charlotte Flair. Uh, so my one's going to divide opinions a little bit. Um, <laughs> <clears throat> I want to see something where maybe, maybe you'd have MVP still involved and like stoking the flames a little bit, ruffling people's feathers. We've seen him have backstage interactions with Big E. We've seen him with Kofi, winding them up a little bit. I want to see some sort of like... I'm very much not in the camp of the New Day need to split up or that they need to turn heel. I think that would be the worst fucking thing ever. They do not need to split up. They do not need to, to turn heel. I would love to see some sort of like healthy respect competition type thing between the three of them so you've got kofi ex wwe champion biggie current wwe champion mvp comes in and stokes the flames saying like oh who was the better wwe champion out of the two of you yeah, oh yeah. xavier woods you've never been wwe champion you're the weak link in this group of three xavier woods wants to prove himself something do something there a triple threat where they stay together They'd fucking hug at the end of it, show each other respect or something. I don't know, whatever. But that that match sounds like a fucking match of the year. 
contender already. I don't know if it, you know, they're, they're obviously all on the same show, so it's nothing about show versus show. That's just my fantasy booking. I would like that a lot. Yeah. I think sorry, I'm going to do that a little bit. That'd be a Kofi fantastic match. Against, uh, the Lashley match, yeah. Not, uh, I thought more would come of that, but it didn't. But I enjoyed that when MVP was doing that to Kofi, so we could see that a bit more. That would be that would be great. And you know they'd kill it in Kofi. And the very underrated Xavier Woods as well. Yeah. Oh, wait for you. I'm just fine. Match you had with Riddle on Raw. Most underrated one in the company right wow. now. The match wow. is fantastic. Oh, is the backbone New Day. That, in Madison Square Garden, you give that eight stars. <laughs> I get laughed at when I tell people that was one of my favorite matches of the year. And I'm like, y'all was, didn't watch it then because it was fantastic. Oh, I agree. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, mm. he's I don't think he's WWE champion material. I don't I don't know no. why. I don't know what it is about him, but he doesn't scream WWE champion, but I think he'd be a hell of a US or uh, yeah. champion or King I of the Ring. I think what stunts Xavier is being with the New Day, and you look at them and you're like, okay, yeah, Big E's obviously champion material. Kofi Kingston proved himself as champion material. Stacked up to them, he doesn't really fit the billing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I personally think he's the best of the three in ring, but yeah. as far as look goes, he just doesn't fit the billing, and that's unfortunate for him because he's fantastic. He's excellent on the mic as well. Really, really. Yep. Good. Oh, he's the best on the mic. Of, uh, he's been the best, best on the rock for like years as well. I remember him in TNA, his consequences yeah. of Creed, and making yeah, his it, debut it blows, at for Glory in 2007, man. Yep. Bl- blows my mind he hasn't had a singles title run. Yeah. He hasn't. It's mental, isn't it? There's no reason why they couldn't could go that way. They, they don't need to team him and Kofi for a while. He would have been one of those people, like, if I really wanted to, like, give a shit about 205 Live and get some people interested, like, I would make him the focal point of the show. Yeah. Or the 24 7 title. Oh, darn. That is like the kiss of death. <laughs> uh, give us a call, bro. Go on. <laughs> that was weird. I'm wrong. Ricochet versus Reggie for the 24 7 title. Oh. That was decent. It was fun. It was a good match, but. Sure. Uh, you, you know Ricochet's literally counting down the days and literally yeah. praising the young bucks on like text messages like, yeah, with, like on WhatsApp. Like, wow, really good. How What's is he doing in AW? <laughs> Y'all guys are looking real good over there. <laughs> <laughs> you get tap. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Right, guys. I, I think that's it then. Let's let's wrap it up there and leave it there. Um I have Enjoy talking about Survivor Series. Lots of great memories. Like we said, it's a shame that it's sort of fallen off. But who knows? Let's let's hold hold out hope for this year. We've got the amazing Roman Reigns. We've got Biggie championship run that, that could go down in history as one of the best. Hopefully, we're going to see some really cool matchups. We mentioned in there Nakamura versus Priest. I think that's got five stars written all over it. Potential dark horse match of the night. So, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, like I said, this episode is going to drop just before Survivor Series. We'll have a much, much clearer idea of what's going on by then. Hopefully, some of our predictions and things that we've we've said might happen will happen. Guys, you three, thank you for joining me again, 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 again. I think people <laughs> by this point probably know where they can find you, but just in case, probably. just in case, Jimmy, where can people find you? Uh, first and foremost, Wrestle Buddy. I'll get that out of the way so I don't forget it this time. <laughs> um, I'm on Twitter, Jimmy Bebe. Uh, I have a match star rating system. You're going to love it. Tune in, catch it. And uh, I'll end this with Vince. I hope you're listening to me. Give me war games. Give it to me. Yes. It's the best star rating system out there. Absolutely. Best one on the internet. But completely unbiased opinion. It is the best. Completely. <laughs> Mike, where are we finding you? Yeah, Twitter at nannyboy 20 Come give me a follow. That's all I have to say, really. George, where are you, buddy? And where's your podcast? At Bookamania89 on Twitter. Podcast is called What Do You Call It? Podcast. And Survivor Series 1995 is the best Survivor Series pay per view of all time. If you don't agree with me, feel free to tweet at me. I may either reply or fucking block you. I'll try not to swear. Tweeting you right now. <laughs> awesome guys and you know where to find me um it's all in the link tree which will be in the about section thank you for joining us as always hope you enjoyed this survivor series super show enjoy the pay-per-view and until next time thank you and take care